This is video 3 in the topic How does a compass work? In this video we're going to be considering the Earth's magnetic field. So in this video we're going to be considering the Earth's magnetic field. This video is going to be mainly qualitative. We'll be discussing some of the interesting phenomena surrounding the Earth's magnetic field and why the Earth has a magnetic field. So the Earth's magnetic field is actually an area of active research. The broad theory behind why the Earth has a magnetic field is well understood, but a lot of the details are still a bit, bit sketchy, and so people are currently working on researching it. So in order to understand why the Earth has a magnetic field, we first need to understand a little bit about the structure of the Earth. So the Earth has a crust, it's then got a mantle, it's then got an outer core, which is fairly molten, and an inner core. Now it's actually the outer core that we're interested in. The outer core has got a lot of iron in it and as we saw in the street light topic, because iron's a metal, it conducts electricity. So we actually have electric currents flowing through the outer core of the earth. Now as we'll see in the next video, any current actually has a magnetic field associated with it. So it's actually the current within the mantle, well, the current within the core of the Earth, which is generating most of the Earth's magnetic field. Let's have a look at what the magnetic field lines of the Earth look like. Now, if we have a compass, the North Pole, what we call the North Pole of that compass, points towards the North Pole of the Earth. So it may not be entirely obvious, but this means that the inside of the Earth is behaving like a bar magnet. And this bar magnet actually has a south pole at the north pole of the Earth. So this is because a north magnet tries to point towards the north pole, and we know that unlike charges attract, so the north pole of our magnet must be attracted to the actual south pole of the Earth. And so we can imagine the Earth as having a bar magnet with a south pole up near the north pole of the Earth and a north pole down near the south pole of the Earth. And the magnetic field lines actually come out in three dimensions around the sphere as we've drawn. So how we can actually see these magnetic field lines is with what's called a three-dimensional compass, which I've got here and we'll be looking at in more detail in just a minute. So it, in this three-dimensional compass, we've got a small magnet, just like in a normal compass, except that this small magnet is free to move in all three dimensions. Let's have a bit of a closer look at this compass now. Okay, so as you can see here, this magnet is actually making quite a steep angle with the floor, suggesting that in Australia, or at least here in Sydney, the magnetic field lines are coming up out of the floor at a relatively steep angle. Now as we move the magnet around, so as we move the compass around, the magnet remains pointing in the same direction. So the Earth's magnetic field, as we're about to see, is very important but it's not actually very strong. The strength of the magnetic field varies around the Earth. As we've seen, its direction varies around the Earth. It varies from around about 25 to 65 microteslas. So the Earth's magnetic poles are not actually located at the same location as the geographic poles. The geographic poles are the places on the Earth that the Earth rotates about. So we can find our exact geographic North Pole or South Pole as the case may be by looking up at the sky at night, looking up at the stars and the point where we get circles around is the North or the South Pole. The magnetic poles don't align with this. We've got one pole in Canada and the other pole is in Antarctica. So these poles aren't even directly opposite each other on the, through the centre of the Earth. And what's more, these poles can actually move around. And it's been observed that the one in Canada has actually travelled up to 40 kilometres per year. So there's a field called paleomagnetism 
in which geologists or physicists can trace the movement of the poles. So I'll be discussing more about that in just a second. But one really interesting phenomenon that can happen with the Earth's magnetic fields is that every so often they actually just switch direction. The North Pole becomes the South and the South Pole becomes the North. This happens on average every 450,000 years. But we haven't had one for 780,000 years, so we're well overdue for one. However, they haven't been happening at regular intervals through history. You can look at this graph showing how they happen, and you can see there's no regular pattern. So even though we're well overdue for a reversal of the magnetic field, it doesn't mean that it's likely to happen anytime soon. So let's discuss a little bit more about paleomagnetism. Paleomagnetism allows us to trace where the magnetic North Pole and South Pole were back through history. And how this works is that geologists look at the alignment of ferromagnetic crystals in rocks. Now when a volcano produces igneous rocks, Igneous rocks are just ones that come from a volcano, so when they're laid down, they're all runny. So because the rocks are all runny, the crystals are free to move about in them, and they can align themselves with the Earth's magnetic field. So by looking at how the crystals are aligned, and looking at the historic record and dating these rocks, the paleomagnetists can work out exactly where the, how the Earth's magnetic field was aligned at different points in history. And that is how we generate a graph such as this one. So you don't actually have general agreement yet among scientists about what causes these magnetic field reversals. So it's still an area of active research. Now a very important function that the Earth's magnetic field performs is that it keeps us safe from solar radiation. The sun undergoes 11 year cycles where it goes through more and less activity. And all this time it produces a solar wind, but every 11 years this solar wind gets especially strong. So the solar wind is a stream of charged particles heading out from the sun. And as it heads out from the sun, some of these charged particles intersect with the Earth's location in space. And charged particles are generally bad news for people. They're generally known as radiation and they can cause cancers and all sorts of problems for us and for our technological equipment. However, when charged particles enter a magnetic field, they experience a force. In the next video, we'll be seeing the equation that describes this force. But when we know that when a particle feels a force, from Newton's second law, it must mean that the particle undergoes acceleration. So with the Earth's magnetic field lines, the particles actually feel a force which causes them to travel helical paths. So the ionizing radiation coming from the sun doesn't actually hit the Earth directly. It travels along in a helical path around the Earth's magnetic field lines. So this directs it to hit the Earth at a couple of locations near the North and the South Magnetic Pole. And at these locations we can actually observe these ionizing particles hitting the Earth's atmosphere. They're known as the Northern and Southern Lights or as the Aurora. In a second we'll be looking at a video showing this. What's actually happening is that when the ionizing radiation hits the atmosphere, it causes the nitrogen and oxygen atoms in the atmosphere to ionize, but then eventually the nitrogen and oxygen atoms regain their electrons, so they become unionized un un again. And when they become unionized, they release a photon. And a photon is a particle of light, because we've seen how light can be a particle or a wave. A photon is the particle of light, and we see that light as greenish for the nitrogen molecules becoming unionized and bluish for the oxygen atoms becoming unionized. So let's have a look at this video taken from space now showing the southern lights over Australia. So this shows the space station passing over Australia and taking the image of the 
Aurora Australis. You can see this is the reionization of nitrogen molecules. So magnetic fields slow down and direct this ionizing radiation, which is good for us. It means that we're not being constantly bombarded by radiation, which is going to cause us all to get cancer. The magnetic fields are also important for our atmosphere, as without these magnetic fields, this ionizing radiation would actually rip away our ozone layer. And our ozone layer, as I'm sure you know, is very important for protecting us from UV light. So yet another source of cancer. Now, these magnetic fields causing the ionized particles to follow helical paths around them actually cause a concentration of these charged particles. So we get concentrations of these charged particles in above the Earth's atmosphere. They're known as the Van Allen belts. The Van Allen belts aren't really a problem for us here on Earth, but they can be a problem for spacecraft as when spacecraft go through the Van Allen belts, they're exposed to a lot of charged particles, which can interfere with their technological equipment, as it can interfere with the currents and magnetic fields and things within the spacecraft. So another really fascinating thing about magnetic fields is that some animals can actually sense the Earth's magnetic field. So there's some bacteria which are very small, with ferromagnetic materials in them. The ferromagnetic materials align with the Earth's magnetic field and the bacteria responds to this. It's also been shown that birds can sense magnetic fields, or at least some bird species can. So there's some theories that maybe birds might use the Earth's magnetic field when they're migrating to assist with their navigation because this might be easier at night if they can't see the stars, for example. So in this video, we've considered some of the interesting aspects about the Earth's magnetic field, how it comes into being, its size, which is small, and how the direction can vary around the Earth. Here in Sydney, it's coming up out of the floor at an angle of about 60 degrees nearer to the equator is much more parallel to the surface of the Earth. The next video is going to be much more quantitative. We're going to be looking at equations to describe the force felt by charged particles. And because a current consists of charged particles, we saw at the beginning of session that a current consists of moving electrons, which is moving particles. So we will also be looking at the force felt by a current in a magnetic field. Thanks to Sebastian Frick for filming this video and also thanks to these people for providing images with Creative Commons license or which were copyright free which I made use of and also for the video of the Aurora Australis.